Welcome back. I'm Tiffany. And I'm LJ. And this, and this is, is the Hope Shot. Shot. So LJ's story here is mainly about never giving up. Keep it moving and keep trying. Um, LJ, where did it all begin for you? Well, uh, addiction took its form when I was five years old. I, I believe I was born an addict. <clears throat> and at five years old, I started cutting. Uh, I went through uh, some abuse uh, when I was young. Um, and uh, always felt like I wasn't loved and, uh, you know, I got punished a lot. I was in trouble a lot. And uh, so I started cutting. And uh, I remember the first time that I cut, um, my mother punished me, sent me to my room, and I went up and threw a tantrum and a piece of glass fell down. And I picked it up and cut myself and my mother came and, you know, ran my finger under the water, gave me a kiss and everything oh. else. And I knew right then I could get my mom to love me if I was bleeding. Okay. And, and just like any other part of my addiction, it got worse as I got older. And the cuts, instead of just cutting my finger, I was putting about 100 stitches in my arm at the time. Okay. So then at 12, I uh, started being uh, bulimic. And uh, I don't know, I wasn't fat, so it wasn't really about weight. It was just, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't know, just addiction, I guess. You know, it, it, again... Uh, trying to fill that emptiness, you know, uh, from the time I was born, I have felt an emptiness. I, I felt a longing. And uh, so I, I used whatever I could to fill that emptiness, you know. Mm -hmm. um, at 17, I went into the Army. I was two weeks out of high school, and uh, I went into the Army, and uh, everybody in the Army was drinking. Right. So uh, I started drinking. And because I'm an addict, that got out of control, too. I got into a lot of fights, a lot of bar fights. Uh, okay. You know, it started causing problems for me, getting kicked out of uh, houses. You know, my, my girlfriends, uh, you know, didn't want me around because I was drunk all the time and, and whatnot. So now, um, now, I never stopped any of those uh, addictions, okay? So, like, I... I was cutting, I was drinking, I was bulimic, and I, you know, all of it. So it was like... As you were doing it all, did you feel like any of it was a problem at this point, or it was just kind of all... You know, life? I didn't. I, 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 I didn't. I um, never went into rehab for, for drugs. Um, I went in and out of hospitals for mental institutions, things like that, mm -hmm. um, for cutting. Uh, but it was never brought to my attention that you're an addict, you know? Um... So, uh, you know, I just kept doing what I was doing. and all of it uh, all together. It, yeah, and, and it just got worse and worse and worse because then I started, you know, being in relationships, obviously, and they were all messed up, too, because of that emptiness, okay? It's like okay. I, I, my, my picker was broke or something. I just did not, you know, mm -hmm. I was like anything needy, lost, uh, you know, I, I was attracted to because... Okay. The thing is, is like, I, I was needy and lost. And so that's, you know, they say water seeks its own level. And right. that's exactly what I did. Uh, but those relationships don't work out, you know. So. Uh, when were you introduced to recovery? Okay, 1992, I went to uh, Miami. Um, you know, I, I got down to Miami uh, due to a really... A bad situation. I was living with this guy who was the grand cyclops of the Ku Klux Klan, <laughs> and uh, we yeah we fought a lot and uh, drank a lot, and uh, it, it got really bad. And I ended up uh, the police sent me down to Miami, and they put me in this place called Agape Women's Home, and I found recovery, and uh, and it took off from there. I was involved, but it, it, the recovery was. Um, it wasn't like a 12-step program. It was uh, religious. Okay? okay, so we went to the church, and and I, I started finding myself and filling that void uh, with God. And okay. uh, I became a, a assistant youth director, and I sang in the choir, and uh, life was good again, you know. All right. Um, so you lived in Miami for some time, and then I think you mentioned you moved to Tennessee. Yeah, what happened was... Uh, um, me and my girlfriend now in recovery i i had a girlfriend that was my first healthy relationship okay. which i knew nothing about okay <laughs> i didn't know i didn't know anything about it and i'm sure it was a lot more painful than her for her than it was me you know but uh anyways uh so i we broke up 
And I did not know how to handle that. Okay, my way of handling breakups was go away, F you, blah, 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 blah. Right. Okay, right. so, you know, I, I had no experience and I couldn't get her to talk to me. She uh, kept saying, I love you too much to talk to me and I didn't understand that. Yeah. So I did what every good addict does, I ran. And I, I found a new yeah. girlfriend and moved to Tennessee like two weeks later, you know. <clears throat> so in Tennessee, um, I stayed in recovery. And, uh, uh, you know, I managed to get quite a few years clean and, and things were good. You know, I mean, uh, it was really good, but the girl wasn't clean and uh, the relationship wasn't perfect. She kept cheating and, and that would just crush me. You know, she was, uh, it would crush me. And then one day I came home and I caught her in bed with my best friend mm -hmm. and uh, I shot myself in the chest and I blew everything out on my left side and... Uh, Ended up in the hospital. Ended sure. up, yeah, ended up in the hospital and uh, they put me on some, you know, heavy drugs mm -hmm. and uh, they didn't detox me before I got out of the hospital. So I, I went back into addiction. I wasn't, I wasn't really familiar with the whole detoxing thing, okay? Cause like, yeah. I, you know, I did, I, back then, back in 92, I don't think they were either as, as right. they are now, you know? Yeah. So, um, but uh, anyway, so like, uh, so I, it, things rolled out of hill again, and uh, so you were in active addiction at that point again after shooting yourself. I mean, how do you feel you found recovery again? I found recovery. Okay, so I moved here and uh, here with my parents. Um, okay, I got put on disability and uh, left Tennessee and came here and. Uh, I started going to uh, bake here, um, okay. and I met uh, Sasha, okay. and uh, she um, introduced me to recovery again. Uh, she was, okay. yeah, she was very helpful and very instrumental in uh, bringing me to, you know, getting me involved with the meetings and, and whatnot, and uh, she was a good therapist. She was my therapist, and she was, she was great, and uh, then... Um, so you found recovery through Sasha, and I mean, what did you do? Well, here's the thing, like I couldn't, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't stay clean. I'd get a couple months clean, um, a couple, you know, and then I just, I kept floundering. Okay. Uh, but then I got into some solid recovery for a while, okay? Um, and had several years clean again and was doing the, the steps and the sponsorship and the, okay. and the service and all of that stuff. And then I moved to um, St. Pete and that turned out to be disastrous. I, I went back into addiction again. I don't really remember the, cer I know what it was. It was a guy that was across the street from me that came over to the house one day and said, hey, LJ, can I smoke some stuff in your house? Cause I can't do it at my house cause my wife and being the people pleaser that I am and being the wanting everyone to care about me and like me, I said, right. yes. And, uh, and so I, I, I started planting the seed for addiction. Okay. So like okay. I knew where to get, it. I wasn't using it yet, but I knew where I could get it. I knew, I knew the whole bit. I got into a relationship again and, uh, you know, I'm just not really good in relationships. And, uh, she, this girl had a daughter. And uh, she was 16 and she, I was real close to her. And uh, she, she killed herself mm -hmm. and she hung herself. And uh, it was devastating for me and her mother. And uh, I, I went back into that. addiction. Well, you know, I, I had said to her, uh, you know, what, it, what can I do for you? And she just wanted to get high and I, I okay. wanted to get high too. So yeah. I just was so devastated. So we got high and uh, that went on for a while. It didn't go on for a long time because I was so, every time I got clean, uh, even though I went back, like it, when I went back into addiction, it was like I had never been clean, okay? I started the cutting, the lying, the bulimia, everything uh. all again. Although, listen, at some of the times that I was clean, I was still cutting, I was still smoking cigarettes, I was still bulimic, I still had those manifestations, 
So I'd never really been clean or free from active addiction. Because again, at those points when you were living in recovery, but still had those, the bulimia and the cutting, those were the, it was the pills and the drugs and the alcohol that was the problem. Right. That's what that's what I was thinking. Yeah, right. that's okay. Um, you know, that's it's what we do as as addicts. I think in the beginning is we uh, want want to find blame, and uh, it, it's always um, for me, anyways. It was uh, not the right place. You know what I mean? Because okay. uh, I didn't realize until later in life uh, that to experience freedom from active addiction, I had to give up all of all of my manifestations. Um, and I had never really been willing to do that until, you know, towards the end. So, okay. um, so yeah, anyways, then... I, I relapsed again. Yeah, I relapsed again. And uh, what happened was uh, I u was using for a few weeks and I was using some drugs that I wasn't familiar with. And uh, I, uh, in a blackout, I robbed a little pizza store with a, a squirt gun. And uh, I got arrested mm -hmm. and uh, went to jail. And uh, went to court and whatnot, and uh, they wanted to give me 10 years. And I tried to fight it, excuse me, I tried to fight it, but it didn't work. They gave me 10 years, so I ended up going to prison. I was, uh, I was devastated again. I was scared. I, you know, you hear stories about prison, and, yeah. you know, I, I didn't know, so I was just doing what I had to do. And... I got to prison and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, although it was bad, you know. Um, my first two years uh, in prison, I stayed using. I, uh, you know, they, it's very easy to get drugs in prison. It's, okay. uh, they're all around. So anything you can get out on the streets, you, feel like you can get in prison. that's kind of how you fit into with a lot of the people as to... Well, again, it was it was about wanting to belong, wanting to be a part of, wanting to be loved, wanting, yeah. So, um, you know, that's that's what I did. That's what I knew. And and not only that, but I was so devastated at this point and so broken. Hopeless. Yeah, I was. I felt hopeless, and yeah. I felt like this is. I honestly felt like this was my life. I figured recovery would work for you guys, but it wouldn't work for me because now I had twice. Twice I had a clean time. And relapse. So I, I thought for sure recovery wouldn't last for me, you know? Yeah. So I didn't really have a whole lot of hope. <clears throat> uh, in prison, I was deemed a um, violent criminal. And uh, the only way we could come out of our quad at nighttime was to go to a recovery program. Okay. okay. Uh, there was three at the time, uh, three different programs. And uh, I tried to go to all three of them, you know what I mean? Because okay. I just wanted to get out. Yeah. Um, then what happened is one of them, uh, which is kind of my home, uh, I started getting real close to again and started, that spark started lighting mm -hmm. again. But there was always this apprehension because in the back of my mind, I was like, how long is it going to last this time? And I just, yeah, you know, yourself. yeah, it was just, it was really difficult. Um, but you know, in prison, I did a lot of changing. Uh, you know, when you're sitting in a cell, a 10 by 10 cell, and uh, you have nothing but your thoughts, your regrets, your, you know, stuff like that. It, you, you can't help, you can't help but do some soul searching. And at the end of that, you realize this is my fault. This is, this, I did this, I created this. So I wanted to know how I created it. And uh, it dawned on me that uh, it all started at five, you know, that, that, that addiction had always been there, uh, always a part of my life, and that if I wanted freedom from active addiction, I had to give it all up. Okay. And th at this point, I was willing to try, because here's the thing. I started thinking the reason the first two times didn't work is because I didn't give up all of my manifestations. I, I always was cutting or bulimic or, or in crazy relationships, addicted to something. Okay, so by this third try of recovery, you were starting to realize. Yeah, uh, at, that, okay. at that time, um, I also understood that relationships were kind of an addiction for me because I couldn't get out of them. The, the, the feeling was the same. Like when they were over, I couldn't walk away. It's just like drugs. I, I wanted to walk away, but I couldn't do it. I just did not have the, the uh, whatever to, to walk away. So, so I realized that relationships were addictive too. 
At the time, uh, I had a sponsor um, who was bringing the meetings into into the prison, okay. and she um, she made me realize this all all these addictions and whatnot. And at that point, I became totally willing to give it all up. Okay. So I I I I quit using. Um, I quit smoking cigarettes. I smoked for thirty five years. I quit smoking cigarettes. Um, I quit uh, being bulimic and I quit relationships. And uh, at that time, I made a conscious decision to not do relationships because uh, I wasn't healthy in them. Okay, and I I wanted to get healthy. I wanted I had I had a goal. I had a goal that I wanted like to to work some steps and I wanted to do some stuff before I tried it again, before I did it again, because my whole life I've been in a relationship and none of them worked out. And the common denominator was obviously me, you know? Right. So, um, so that was that. Was that. And uh, in prison towards the end, the last two years, um, I had uh, six years clean the last two years, and uh, I got put in the drug program in, okay. in prison. Um, and... Uh, became a mentor more or less and and uh and it was it was great um uh, there was no uh recovery meeting that i like um on the on the facility so i started my own and uh when i when i first started it was every friday and there was just a few girls that came and by the time i left prison there was 40 women it was wow. it was crazy and it's still going on today uh, and actually, one of my sponsees is running it. So that is so inspiring, honestly. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So and by that time, you like you said, you had six years clean from all of your active. All of it, yeah. Okay. So and then uh, then I got out of prison two years later, and yeah, uh, that's when I met you. Yeah, that that's when exciting. I met you. Yeah. Uh, it was it wasn't long after I got out either. So we went to the camp out. I yeah. met you. Yeah. So uh, when I got out of prison, I, I had nothing. I had no clothes, I had no money, I had no friends. I, I literally had nothing. And my parents were real reluctant. Up until the day I got out, they said I cannot come back there. Right. So it was like, what am I gonna do? And, and I kept telling my mother, I'm gonna live in a tent because I'm not going to read. I'm not going to a halfway house because I had eight years clean and I know what halfway houses are like, okay? okay. It's a lot of new recovery and a, a lot of drama and I wasn't, I just didn't want to deal with that. So yeah. um, I told her I was going to live in a tent. She says, you can't live in a tent. That's dangerous. I said, I've been in prison for 10 years. What's <laughs> more dangerous than that? You know, yeah. um, you know, I had a lot of bad experiences in prison. I, I got jumped by some girls. I, I got shanked by a girl. Um, I, I, you know, run into some problems with the, the officers. Um, you know, it, it's dangerous. It's it's dangerous in prison. So, but I you learn to, you learn to get strong. You know what I mean. Right. So, anyways, uh, I got out. I didn't have anything, and uh, my mom allowed you to come in. Yeah, they okay. they did. They said, okay, you can come here, and it was it was awkward. It was awkward because my mother only had reference to who I used to be. Okay. She didn't know who I had become because I mean I I, I saw her. You know, they came to visit me in prison every now and then. Okay. But, uh, you know, and I got to talk to her like every Friday, but she didn't see the process. She didn't know that I had changed. Yeah. So she kept um, thinking I was going to be this and, and do it this way and everything else. Um, and so she, she was crying a lot because, uh, well, a lot of reasons, but she didn't want to hear about prison, and that was my reference I, for 10 years almost. Yeah. and. So, um, you know, I, I, I had to move out. I had to move out before things got bad. And uh, I went to a meeting and uh, expressed that, that I, I got to move out. And, and uh, two people came up to me and offered me a place to live. And uh, uh, Cheryl was one of them. And uh, I feel very blessed that I, that I came here. This has been the best roommate situation I've ever had. Um, we truly uh, care about each other. We truly care about recovery. She's in recovery also. Uh, we truly care about recovery. And 
And you stay active in the in the meetings and the sports. We do stay active. I, I stay extremely active. Now, you know, with this COVID thing, it's been, you know, we're doing Zoom and it's a big change, but there's still ways to stay active. You know what yeah. I mean? There's still ways to stay active. So um, what do you feel like recovery outside of prison has given to you? Oh, Lord. I, you know, <clears throat> it started off, okay, when I got out of prison, like I said, I had no money, no nothing. Um, SSI, I've been on disability. SSI owed me some money. Okay. Not a whole lot, but a, few, a couple thousand dollars. Okay. And I bought a car. Okay, so, and this car cost like a $1,000 and it was beat up and I kept having to put money into it, put money into it, right. but I had a car and uh, I started going to meetings, you know, like, that's, like, listen, two hours after I got out of prison, I was in my first meeting, my recovery meeting, and, uh, you know, I mean, I just knew, I knew to get out of prison and, and start off fresh and to, to get into a meeting, you know, okay. so I did. Um, and so when I got the car, I mean, that's really all I ever did. I mean, my whole life was about recovery and it was about people who were clean. I, you know what, to be honest with you, um, I, I know some people that have relapsed and whatnot, but I don't know any people that, that use, you know okay. what I mean? Like right. there's just, there's not a whole lot of that in my life. Now I uh, am very active also in the community. Um, I work at, uh, I volunteer at a pantry and feed the homeless and stuff. I meet a lot of addicted people there, but I don't hang out with them. You know right. what I mean? I just, I You're help them. Help. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm there to help and give back. And the right. reason is, is because my whole life I've been a taker. I, I'm just a taker, you know? And uh, when I got out of prison, I, I knew I wanted a different different life. And so I, I, I did the opposite of everything I did. Okay. You know, and uh, instead of being a taker, I became a giver. And uh, boy, did I get blessed as a result, you know. Uh, it wasn't long after prison uh, that I um, ended up getting a really nice car. Uh, and I had the money to do that with the stimulus check and the money that I had been saving. Um, it was amazing, you know. A, a lot of the reason I was able to save was... Uh, you know, I worked out a deal with my, my roommate where I did the cooking and the cleaning and she kind of gave me a little break on the rent and, and that helped me so much go into, you know, being able to save money and everything else because I couldn't do that before prison, you know. And like you said, with I, when we were talking, you told me that because of recovery, your roommate trusted you enough and loved you enough to do something like that for you. You know, and that leads you into, you know, all the people and the friends that, you know, love you and respect you. They know you as a person of integrity, as a person of, uh, as a person who plays an integral role in our community with helping. And, um, yeah, I mean, LJ, your story is beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful, especially because, like you said, recovery doesn't come to everyone the first time, the second yeah. time, you know but you kept trying because you've seen the good in it and um, it's given you so much success here today. Yeah, it, it really has, you know. Um, I, uh, I just can't say enough about recovery and, and, and you know, I was thinking when I moved to this area, it's gotta be because of the area, it's a small area. I'd always been in big areas and everything else. And, and I, I realized that it wasn't the area, it was me. I had, I had significantly changed um, I was living to my potential and I had never done that in my life. You know what I mean? I was either in a codependent relationship where it was more important to make her happy than me. Um, I was cutting, I was stealing, I was lying, I was cheating, you name it, I was doing it. Uh, there was very little integrity in between. And, uh, the only time that I remotely, um, had a good life was when I was in recovery. So... I knew that, and that was my, you know, that's why I kept going back. That's why I kept trying. Um, and this time was amazing. Uh, like I said, I, I got a new car. I started my own business uh, on Marketplace, and, uh, and it was kind of crazy at first. Like, I was uh, just getting things that were free and fixing them up and, and trying to sell them. And people started knowing that I was doing this. So they'd call me people in recovery. Oh, that's awesome. I, I got a couch or I got a this or I got a that. And, and things started getting really good. Um, and then uh, I found my niche and uh, okay. and uh, things things worked out again. And 
uh, you know, I, I'm in a, a place where I, I have a, a checking account, a savings account, uh, and a, a put a money aside. You know what I mean? Okay. That's never happened to me before. You know, the fact that I have a savings account is, is crazy. I've never had that before, you it's know. It's incredible to get some recovery. It is because, you know, the, 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 I wish the money, the money is, I, I mean, I just can't. You know, I was thinking that I quit smoking also when I got out of prison. Um, in one year, I would have spent $3,700, I think it was. It's like a pack a day is like seven, eight dollars you know. Okay. That's a lot of money. You know, that's that's money that... Um, I, I'm saving now, you know, and, and, uh, and things, yeah, things are really good. And I, um, I have a, a good relationship with, uh, my sponsor. Uh, I didn't know my sponsor when I met her. I knew that, um, I knew Sasha had sponsored her and I knew she had 26 years clean. Uh, and that's all I knew about her, but that was enough, okay. you know? And so I just kind of went up to her at a meeting and said, will you sponsor me? And she said, yeah, and uh, we are extremely close because I call her every day, like literally every day. And, uh, you know, um, you know, when I first came into recovery, I had a girlfriend that called her sponsor every day. And I used to give her a hard time, like, you got to call your sponsor every day. Like, what's that about? You know, right. and uh, and now I get it. It's not that I have to call her. It's that it, it keeps me on track. You know what I mean? And not only that, but we're, we're friends. You know, we're, we're friends now. And uh, she's invested in my life. I'm invested in her life, you know. And we have a great relationship. And I, there's, there's, she really helped me um, understand that I was okay the way I was. Okay. okay, it's like when I first got out of prison, I was, I felt like I was a pretty messed up person, you know, because... Uh, right just everything I've been through in prison and yes. everything that happened in my life. Um, it was bad, you know, and uh, I, I, I kept thinking I need to be softer because I built this hard core, you know, that, in prison. And I remember her saying to me one day, I'll never forget it, it's the best thing that's ever been said to me. She said, LJ, there are people in the world that need people like me, and there are people in the world that need people like you. <laughs> and when she said that, it all con my whole life connected for me because my whole life I've been told I'm too this, I'm too that, I'm too fast, too fat, too small, whatever it was. Right. It was never right. And and here was somebody telling me I I was right. You know what I mean? Now that's not to say that I don't have work to do on some of my defects, you know, because uh, some of them are loud, you know, yeah. and, and I, and I do want to, uh, uh, maybe make myself a little bit softer. Okay. Cause I, I'm pretty hardcore. Uh, my sponsees know me that I'm a, a just to the point kind of girl. And I uh, will say it the way it is. And I, you know, if, if I offend you, I, I kind of feel like, you know what, you baby the attic, you bury the attic. So I'm, I'm pretty rough sometimes. Uh, and sometimes, uh, I, you know, I get off the phone with them and I think, oh, you shouldn't have been that rough, you know. So I, mm -hmm. I go back and I, you know, Soften tell them. Soften it up on the end. Yeah, I, I, because the thing is, is it's it's not, I'm, I'm not being judgmental or anything like that. I love these people, you know. You're being and, honest. And, you know, and the right. thing is, is like, you know, doing, me, myself, uh, being in recovery several different times and having clean time, you just want to shake someone and say, come on, wake up. You know, you, right. I have, I know so many people that are in and out and in and out and in and out. And it's like, wake up, you know, but uh, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, and I've, I've learned that the hard way, you know, um, we've had a lot of deaths this year, um, you know, a lot of because of COVID and, and just uh, overdoses. And, and it's sad every time it, it's sad, you know, yeah. um, well, LJ, I do appreciate you sharing your story with us. And, and the biggest part, like you said, I, I love the fact that you just try and try and try again, keep it moving in recovery, and eventually it's stuck. And this time now, you have so much success because of it. You yeah. never gave up. So if you're here, if you're listening still, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to LJ's story. We pray and hope that it gives you that hope shot of never giving up. Just keep trying. And it will stick and you will have your own successes because of it. 
Uh, please hit like, share, subscribe, ring that little bell so you don't miss another episode. And uh, LJ, thanks so much Thank for your you. time. Thank you, Tiffany. I appreciate you.